What's up guys, BT Moto back here, and today we have an issue with our 23 BMW S1000RR. This is a warranty issue. I found a cracked carbon fiber wheel. Our rear wheel on the 23 S1000RR is cracked. Don't know how it happens in the center of the wheel, so it's not from wheel replace or the tire replacement or anything like that. It looks like it just cracked from the sun, and you can barely see it unless it's in the sun, but it's a pretty decent crack in this wheel. Not to the point where it's losing air, but it is something that isn't very pretty and definitely can't be good for the structural integrity of the carbon wheel. This is why we typically recommend people go to a forged uh, wheel if they go to the track or something like that. These carbon wheels just aren't as durable as a forged wheel. There's nothing wrong with the carbon wheels, but if you're really planning on doing some crazy duty with these things, sometimes they just crack, like the enamel's cracking on this thing. So we're taking up to Long Beach BMW right now, speaking to our buddy Jeff, who's the service manager there. He said he has to open what they call a Tassara case, which used to be called a Puma case. It's something that BMW of Long Beach can't approve themselves. The amount's too great, so they have to actually run it by BMW corporate. And that means they gotta have the bike dropped off, take a whole bunch of pictures. So I loaded the bike up this morning, and now we're on our way up to Long Beach right now, so we can talk to Jeff. All right, as you can see, I'm over here at Long Beach BMW Motorcycles. Here is our bike, and just to show you guys, Long Beach, the bike, all the mods are still on it. I'm leaving the front strap kit on it. I'm leaving our lowering link on it. I'm leaving everything that is modded on this bike as is. All right, so I'm here with Jeff Whitmere in our 2023 S1000RR. And Jeff, we can see the issue. We can't really see it right now, but I'll put, a, put the screen up here. You can see actually it's cracked a few different ways, which you said is not very typical on the bike, right? Typically, we don't see broken wheels. When we do, it's usually around the lip from hitting debris or something in the roadway that causes the lip to fail. Uh, when it's in the center of the wheel like that, I feel like it's, it's a defect. And we're gonna shoot that over to BMW and get their opinion on it as well. That's one thing I wanted to ask you, what exactly is the process? Because I know when like, someone comes in with like, like say a leaky fork, that's something the dealership can approve instantly, or is that something that has to be sent to BMW for approval? Or is there a certain money limit? Or there, what is There's exactly? a dollar amount that BMW allows us to, to warranty in good faith, uh, will allow us to warranty a defect up to a certain amount. Anything over that, we have to perform a diag, uh, take some notes and forward that over to them. And then they let us know from there. They'll have questions, whatever, maybe have us take photos, do a data read on the bike, whatever, whatever the situation is. Um, and they'll let us know which way they want us to go with it. So over like a certain amount of, a certain dollar amount, let's say, BMW makes the final call. BMW corporate make the final call, not the dealership as far as warranty goes. That is correct. Anything up up to uh, that that threshold, we're free to do it as we see fit. Um, and anything over that dollar amount, we have to have their approval before we proceed with the repairs. So for example, let's say I had a hole in my motor, for example, right? Or something like that. That's something you'd have to speak with BMW with, you have to send a whole bunch of stuff over, they'd have to look at it, you have to disassemble, there's a whole thing, I think it's called a, what, a Tassara case is what you said? Correct, yes. And then from that point, the dealership wouldn't make the determination, but BMW corporate would, and then they'd let the dealership know, hey, this is either denied or it's approved, right? Correct. BMW Based makes the call. We don't make the call, they do. Are there any modifications that you know of that would cause an instant denial or anything like that, or is everything kind of fair game until BMW sees it? Like we talked about in our, our previous uh, session, if whatever modification you make to the bike causes the defect, then they will deny the claim. It doesn't void the warranty. There's only a few situations that actually void the entire warranty. A cracked wheel doesn't come from an aftermarket exhaust or a, a tune. That comes from a defect or an external influence. Um, in this case, it doesn't appear to be externally influenced. So we're going to put this in BMW's, this ball in BMW's court, let them let us know how they want to proceed in, in this case. But if you had an exhaust system on it or a crazy tune and we're revving the thing at 1500 RPMs more than the factory red line, that has nothing to do with the wheel. So they're going to, they're going to evaluate the wheel claim. If the engine were to go and all of that stuff being on there, they're probably going to deny the claim. That makes sense because you're sitting there rev bombing the bike. You're causing the abuse that's happening to the to the bike. But if correct, if let's say you have a cracked wheel and you have a tune on the bike, they can't just say, "Hey, we're not going to work on this bike because it has a tune on it." It doesn't make any sense, right? Well, BMW isn't going to deny the claim. 
each each one of us as a dealer has the right to work on or refuse to work on any customer vehicle i i don't know why dealers would choose not to work on something that frankly doesn't really make a difference um like we're talking about in this situation um it wouldn't matter how the bike was modified as long as that wasn't caused by the mo modifications so the, the the best idea would be when you go look for a motorcycle would be to find a dealer that's kind of on your level or at your perspective of what a bike should be doing. So let's say Long Beach, for example, you, they sponsor a race team. You're, you're part of the race team, of course. So they're gonna be a little more amenable to modifications to a motorcycle, not just an instant denial, but you'll look into it at least, whereas some dealers may do instant denial. Uh, again, I don't know why a dealer would put themselves in the position to deny something that shouldn't be denied. Um, uh, if, I had, if I had a bike in here that was questionable uh, whether it was my call or BMW's call I'm gonna let BMW make the call based on the information if uh, I couldn't even think of an example right now but if if there was any way shape or form BMW could later contribute the failure that the bike is here for to misuse or modifications that may have caused it then I'm gonna let them make that call there on the spot but uh, once again, if a bike's got an exhaust and you know a, a non-related failure happens, it's not a concern to me. I'm going to take care of that customer. At the end of the day, I want to make sure all of us, because this is my motorcycle, this one is yours, yep. we all ride. We're all part of the same community, and there's no reason I should take the, the stance that, well, because you put an exhaust on your bike, now I'm not going to cover the 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 faulty rear caliper or the leaky fork seal. There's, there's, there's no correlation between the two, so it makes absolutely no sense. I, I think some people are, are using a lot of wrong terminology in all of the groups on Facebook and, and the forums and whatnot. Oh, my, my warranty got voided because of this. My warranty got, no. Your warranty did not get voided. Your claim got denied for whatever reason whether if it if it was an engine that blew and and there's evidence of over revving they're going to deny that claim every time uh we've had bikes in here that had tunes on them that had no over rev uh conditions no over rev event logged uh when we do the data read for bmw they put engines in them there's no reason for a dealer to say no in my opinion some dealers have a different approach to it yeah so to like if someone was going to put an exhaust on it that alone won't avoid it then Correct. rev bombing it to 15,000 with an exhaust on it will void it. <laughs> it will not void it. It will not, they will not cover an engine claim if they can, if they can see in the data read that the engine's been over revved. Right, but. And it doesn't matter if your tune's on it or not, they can tell that it's been externally programmed and it still logs the over rev events. So it doesn't void the warranty, it denies that claim if they can correlate misuse or a modification to the failure. And what's like your best advice to someone that has a motorcycle and maybe worried about BMW denying a claim? What would be your best advice for those people? Uh, do your due diligence. Do not do anything to the motorcycle that will cause BMW to say no. Plain and simple. When you're leaving the bike nights, I, I don't get it, but the rev bombing until your pipe's glowing cherry red and shooting flames out of the muffler, to so, each their own, but so if that, you expect BMW, BMW, you can see is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. So it holds that data in the ECU, your rev bombing and how long you've done it for in a max RPM. Correct. And they can actually see all that stuff, not just the fact that it's been flashed or not, if that's a modification, but Correct. the fact that you've rev, rev bombed it for five minutes in a row and it's at this RPM and it got this hot, basically. Correct. Yeah. So that would cause the denial, not the simple modification itself, but the action of doing X, Y, and Z. You're abusing your motorcycle. Correct. I mean, even if you put an exhaust on incorrectly and let's say it's totally loose and it's leaking out of the head and that causes some kind of burn valve, for example, that would be a denial due to the exhaust because of incorrect installation. Correct. Which caused the burn valve, which makes sense. So Correct. if you're gonna modify, do it right, <laughs> basically, and don't exceed the stock limits, basically. Correct. And and yeah, just make sure that it's done properly and and you didn't abuse the bike to cause the, the failure. That's all. And again, all of that being said, it's not a voiding of the warranty. It is a denial of a, of a very specific claim. You come in here with a blown motor and it's been rev bombed. 
they're not paying for the motor. You come in here the following week for a failed RDC sensor for your, your tire pressure monitor system, they're gonna cover that. So the two have nothing to do with each other. They're still gonna, you're, they're still gonna honor the warranty on the items that have a defect, not the items that have been abused or modified and that's what caused the failure. They're just not gonna pay the claim. They're that not makes, gonna take your warranty. That makes sense. Now, on a motorcycle like this, uh, I know pe some people, especially we're here in Southern California, some people, this is their primary mode of transportation in a motorcycle. What's the time frame people look at when they drop their bike off? Because I hear some people say, oh, it's months. Some people say it's a couple days. Is it good to call in beforehand and say, hey, this is my warranty issue. Do you have the parts in stock? Can we do this in and out? What is the actual typical time frame on turnaround usually? Uh, depending on the situation, if we have to put a, an engine in, uh, typically it's two weeks to get it from BMW after the several days of going back and forth with to Sarah to answer their questions and getting the info that they need uh, for an engine replacement. Figure 30 days. Um, most other items, we're two, three days from the appointment date. Uh, right now, this is the busy season for most, most of the country, so it may take a little bit longer to actually get the appointment and get in. Um, but once, once the bike is on site and, and the diagnosis goes pretty quickly, it's usually a few days. So you, I, yeah, usually it's just a, a wait on parts if they're back order or something, or something needs to be ordered from Germany or whatever the case may be. That's about correct. It. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. So I guess we'll just wait on this thing and see what BMW says. What's up guys, I'm back and it's been almost exactly one month since I dropped off the bike at Long Beach BMW and I got a call the other day from Jeff. It's ready to be collected. Everything was approved. So we got total approval on the bike, even with the strap kit lowered, everything. And we're gonna go over that with Jeff. I'm driving there right now. We're gonna see the bike, see the new wheel and talk to Jeff regarding some more warranty stuff. Then we're taking the bike home. All right, so I'm back here at Long Beach BMW. You can see our bike is all prettied up and you can see brand new wheel right here. It's a brand new carbon wheel BMW got for us. And I'm here with Jeff, who's a service manager for Long Beach BMW Motorcycles. Jeff, thanks a lot for help, helping our bike get to this point. And what sure. exactly is the process? I know we've been here for about a month with the bike or without the bike and you've had it for a month. This wheel itself, I don't know, what does it cost? Like three, 4,000 bucks? I think it's in the neighborhood of 4K. 4,000 bucks. So 4,000 yeah. bucks for the rear wheel on the bike on this one, guys. That's a big hit if I had to pay for this myself, or sorry, we had to pay for this ourselves. And Jeff filed a claim and got it taken care of for us. Now, any other questions we have here are gonna be regarding like, basically the stuff that's, I left the bike as it was before, of course. Um, I didn't do anything to the motorcycle to bring it in here for you guys. And BMW, did they say anything about the motorcycle, the condition of the motorcycle? Did they kind of pry into like, hey, is there any modification to this motorcycle? Or are they kind of reach for, for that For something kind of stuff? like this, no, they're not gonna ask that. Um, you know, they wanted photos of the wheel and the tire and, and, and that sort of thing, but they didn't really get into that for this type of a claim. Other claims are gonna ask for that info, but not this time. So some of the stuff you guys see in here, I mean, you, see, you guys see there's a whole bunch of bikes here. They service all kinds of bikes. They're probably the biggest on the West Coast as far as this stuff goes. They service all the highway patrol bikes, everyone here basically. Um, what do you normally see for failures on bikes like this S1000RR if there's a failure from the engine itself? Uh, the guys that are over revving them, rev bombing them, you know, rod bearings will go. Um, uh, on the earlier bikes, the guys that were rev bombing, they were eating coils up. I think we had a customer whose bike came in several times for coils, and then we found out it was she was rev bombing it, um, and it had a, a pretty bad tune on it. So now, if the customer comes in and says, "Hey, I haven't been rev bombing this thing. Um, you know, my bike's perfect. I haven't done anything to it. Why is it failing? How does BMW know that someone is rev bombing this? What do they do? They we have to plug the bike into the Diag system and do a data read. And from there, BMW um, pulls that file up and looks for um, over rev uh, events. And uh, no matter what you do, the bike is going to show those events. Um, whether the tune's on the bike, whether the tune's off of the bike, if you over rev the bike and it bounces off the rev limiter, it's going to log that event and BMW will be able to read that no matter what. 
So this includes a completely stock bike with no tuning. Rev limiter hasn't been touched. You're saying it will log a rev limit event if you bounce off the limiter, basically. Correct. And then how, does it does it kind of categorize like rev bombing? So it says, oh, you know, 15,000 RPM for this long or something like that. Well, so kind of. It's going to show more like it happened 10 times over the course of 30 seconds in, in the same mileage. So if you're sitting there in neutral, just holding it wide open, letting it bounce off the rev limiter, it's going to log that as it'll show ground speed, mileage, date, time, and how many times it, it hit the limiter. So kind of like a mini black box for Correct. motorcycles, basically. It, it, it's not like it is a black box <laughs> type of scenario. And also when people unlock their own motorcycles, can BMW see that? I mean, obviously they haven't brought in for a service, but is that the only way they can tell us because they didn't bring in for a service? Or is there that data stored as well as it reached this many RPMs at this mileage and it was not unlocked yet by BMW? Uh, it will show, it won't show unlocking. It will show um, RPMs and mileage and dates and times and that sort of thing. So if BMW never unlocked it, let's say the bike has 200 miles on it, you never unlocked it, and the guy shows up, he has something wrong with his motor, and you see it's 200 miles on the motor, it's gone 14,500 RPM or 15,000 RPM for this long or this period of time, that's obviously a, a cause for concern for BMW. They can sit here and go, hey, we never unlocked this thing, why is it at 15,000 RPM, right? Correct, they're not dumb. All right. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> now, as far as um, tuning goes, there was some kind of rumor going around that there's a service bulletin for an automatic warranty void if there's tuning on a motorcycle. Does that exist? I haven't seen it. And this is a service manager for BMW, guys. <laughs> One of the biggest BMW dealers in the country. I mean, he would, he would know. So there's no service bulletin safe for tuning, but if you guys do get your bike tuned, I guess the recommendation for Jeff is do not move that rev limiter up. Keep the rev limiter stock, of course. Any other advice for people that are modding their motor, motorcycles? Don't rev bomb it. Don't rev bomb, is that it? I mean, obviously more oil changes than, than yeah, um, frequency? Yeah, while the bike's under warranty, don't use anything but a BMW oil filter, and I would highly recommend using the BMW oil. Um, you know, Germany, um, a lot of times these cases get escalated to Germany, and if it doesn't dot every I, cross every T, they will, they will deny the claim based on that info. Um, if you're doing your own services like we talked about before, keep a log, date, time, mileage, attach receipts for the oil and the filter, um, you know, just annotate everything that you did and keep very, very good records because that's the second thing they ask me for are the, the maintenance records on the bike. Um, they can see if we unlock it, they can see that event. If you unlock it with a GS911, they can't see that, but they can, they can see the RPMs and, and mileage and, and all of those sorts of things. So, the, the, you know, they're going to take care of you as long as you take care of your bike. If you are doing everything that you should be doing to your motorcycle, chances are they're not going to turn you down. If you put a tune on your bike and you're out leaving a bike night every every time, bouncing the thing off the rev limiter on a cold motor, that, you know, first of all, I have no respect for that person. Secondly, BMW is going to see that and it's automatically going to get turned down. Automatically, without doubt, don't even think about it. So, so I, I say the biggest biggest cause for a warranty void to be rev bombing a bike it's not it, and it's not a warranty void it's a denial of a claim gotcha that 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 is the one scenario that that keeps getting tossed out there bmw will not void your warranty they will deny a claim the th the situations that will void a warranty is if you're racing the bike or if it's involved in a total loss accident that's where they terminate the warranty if you come in here and you've been rev bombing your bike and it pops a motor, they're not gonna void your warranty, they're gonna deny that claim. But in this case, if you blow the motor because you did something wrong, you're gonna pay for the motor, but in this case, the motor had nothing to do with the rear wheel, the rear wheel was a defect, the warranty covered the, the rear wheel. It's pretty simple. Makes sense, so to be perfectly clear here, if somebody is rev bombing their bike, whether it's stock or tuned, it's likely going to get a denial because it can be linked to the damage caused to the engine if said damage can Correct. be linked to over revving the bike. Correct. That's tuned or, or stock, it'll be a denied basically. Correct. Which makes perfect sense to me. You can't just sit there and rev the thing while it's just standing still. It's just, it's not good for it. Just free, no load on the bike, nothing. Especially cold. Yeah. <laughs>
Any other points you'd have for people? Because I know there's a lot of talk online, especially after some videos got released about warranty and BMW and how BMW doesn't stand behind their warranty so much. And I'm not saying that myself. I'm just kind of voicing what other people are saying, like regarding our wheel, of course, I, BMW. I call BS on that. It, it, again, if you are doing everything right, there, there is no reason for them to deny it. If you, if you put yourself in a situation, that's when they're going to deny it. Yeah, and I, I can attest this to myself, guys. Uh, every single BMW we've ever had, and I've ever had personally since 2010 plus, and we're talking we've had probably about 10 plus of these bikes at this point, BMW has never voided anything for us, ever, not once. We haven't had any engine failures because we follow the BMW guidelines. We don't rev bomb our bikes. So we've done pretty well with these things and there hasn't any weird catastrophic failures. We've had very good luck with these motorcycles, but I have had issues where fork seals have gone, a seal on the motor, it started leaking a little bit of oil. BMW is taking care of everything. And you can see the bike as it sits right now, got covered 100% brand new rear wheel, $4,000 right there. Now that's not a motor or anything like that, but you can follow these same kinds of suggestions or what Jeff is saying here to you know, get your motor or ensure your motor will be covered if there is some kind of weird damage that does happen down the road. Right. I think that'll do it, Jeff. I think you've answered all our questions and hopefully this kind of puts a lot of things to rest. Finally. I see the same videos. Uh, again, there's usually three sides to every story. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the one that we all know about, uh, that, was, that was a comedy of errors and that was operator error in my opinion on that one. And that is why that one got de denied. And um, it, it's too bad that one person can falsely advertise something and it, it sticks so well. It just it boggles my mind that people don't do their own research and look into what really happened. So that, that's my take on it. And I've, I've seen some of the things, just one last point of contention here, where, and I can't experience this myself, I've just seen it said many times online and they may be completely full of gas at this point, but People are saying that BMW could possibly, if the, 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 the bike comes in with a slip on, or if they say, is your bike tuned or anything like that, they automatically say denied and they walk you out the door. Is that something a dealership can do or is that something a dealership tries not to do? And what is it? Any dealership can, can work how they feel necessary. Um, if a bike comes here and we have an issue or there's an issue with it and I have to file a claim, I answer BMW's questions. If they ask me if the bike is modified, I give them the, the, the answer that I can, I'm not going to lie to them. Uh, I'm going to give them the answer that is the answer to that question. Um, it's then their call whether or not they want to pay the claim or not. Chances are they're not going to be able to, to correlate a slip on muffler to a rod bearing failure. Unless you have the other data that backs it up the rev bombing, the over revving, you know, that, that sort of thing. And, and I've actually seen, I had it happen a couple of times on a 23 where aggressive downshifts sends the bike into lip mode um, because it over revved it. Uh, I, I had that happen on my 23 like twice. Um, we figured out what it was and, and rectified it. A downshift, they're gonna be able to see all that, that data and they're gonna be able to see throttle position and RPMs and, and how it all went down. So that would probably be a tougher one for them to deny, but luckily I never had to, to get put into that situation. So bottom line, I mean, I, again, I can't even point to the fact that this is even happening, but if someone walks into a dealership and the dealer automatically says, oh, you're tuned, walk away, like we're, we're denying the claim, it's likely just specific to that dealer, not BMW as a whole. It doesn't represent BMW because they can't answer a question that fast, obviously, and the Correct. dealer doesn't have authority to make those, they say BMW says this. A dealer can do whatever they want to do within reason. Right, but uh, if, it, if, they don't want, if they don't want to file the claim on your behalf because they feel that it, the modification on it is gonna void that, that claim, deny, get that. that claim denied, then that, that's on the dealer. I'm not gonna make that call. I'm gonna let BMW make that call. But it, I, I don't speak for every repair center in the country either. And if they do deny that claim, what's the stop? The, the, if they type something in computer or whatever, what's the stop that customer from going to another dealer and getting their assessment? If BMW denies the claim, it's going to be it'll be logged in the system in the warranty. But I mean, system. a dealer specific, not BMW. Oh yeah, a dealer specific. To, hey, we're not going to do this, or you know, it's it's going to be denied because of this. Find a different dealer. A dealer that says modifications are horrible, nobody covers. If they if they happen to say that, you probably want to find another dealer. I'm guessing. 
that would that would be my take on it because it's probably you probably might end up with some issue later if you have a modification and they say hey we right. told you not to modify this thing right but that's just dealer specific they're not submitting to bmw if they submit it to bmw and bmw denies the claim then there's no point in going to other dealers because bmw said no they'll look it up they'll see that that claim has been inserted and bmw right. has already made their decision and it's final correct okay that makes perfect sense to me well thanks a lot jeff i'm going to load this thing up and uh get back on the road here You've been great. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Thank BMW. You. Appreciate you guys. All right, so I'm on the way back now. We got the 23 loaded up in the back of the truck. And I hope this video kind of helps everyone with the warranty process. I know some people were scared of the warranty process or had their doubts about it due to some other videos online. And I just wanted to kind of get that FUD or the, you know, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt away from the conversation when it comes to BMW and warranty. BMW does warranty their stuff. This is proof positive of it. A $4,000 wheel just got warrantied. Um, it just takes some investigational work. The dealership submitted it. Everything's good. They approve it. We're good to go. This all in all took less than a month. And of course, your situation may be faster or longer depending on where the parts are and where they're coming from. If parts are backordered, it will take longer, of course, uh, depending on what you're trying to warranty. And I think the basic takeaway from this video is going to be if you're modifying your motorcycle, just be careful in how you do it and you know, be careful how you treat your bike. That's mainly how it is because just like Jeff said, you can be rev bombing a bike that's tuned or stock. Either way, you're going to get a denial if you have something that's a failure related to that. Maybe a coil goes or something and they see there's a bunch of rev bombing done. They're, they're not going to warranty anything for you. Or like Jeff said, they could just deny the claim altogether at the dealer and not even submit it to BMW because they don't want to deal with it. And that's their right to do. So like I've said before, and like we said in the video here, find a dealer that's more kind of aligned with your wants and needs. So if you're more of a racer, find a dealer that's okay with that. Find a dealer that does that kind of stuff. Just go ahead and try to follow the BMW owner's manual there on frequency of oil changes, stuff like that. But it also use common sense, like I've said in other videos before. If you're tracking your bike constantly, do not go off the factory recommended oil change service intervals. Do your own, make sure it's every track day. If you're doing a track day and you're doing 20 minute sessions, it's hot outside, and you got a few of those for the weekend, just swap the oil out. It doesn't really cost that much money. You're doing preventative maintenance basically, and it doesn't cost you that much to put oil in there, maybe a hundred bucks with all of the oil to filter everything. And um, if you don't do that enough, you're gonna start wiping your bearings. There's a few other things that happen, but like I said, just be mindful of what you're doing to your motorcycle, how you're treating your motorcycle, and then bear that into your service intervals as well. So I think it's going to wrap up this video, and I have plenty of videos to make with this S1000, so I'm glad we got her back. This is our R&D bike, so got plenty more testing and plenty more videos coming. I'll see you guys in the next one.